Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with the new topic as bearing. So in this lecture we'll be dealing with the in detail classification and the applications of bearings. So you might have heard this word before in day to day life that is bearing, and that I have shown with the few animations on this side. You can see a bearing ball bearing is a basic element you might have seen in the bicycles. So what is the function of a bearing? Bearing allows a relative motion between the two moving parts and as we had in previous lectures the types of machine elements and the shaft and axle. So with this, this bearing is a supporting type machine element which supports the shaft and axle and hold them in a correct position. Bearing allows the free rotation of the shaft and axle with minimum friction. So basically bearing reduces the friction between moving objects or moving machine elements or parts and it allows or permit relative motions. So for shaft and axle to support it we use a bearings. So you can see this rolling element as per the types of rolling, rolling element. We have a lot of types of bearings. So we will be discussing this in detail. So basic thing what bearing does it absorbs the two types of forces which acts on a shaft. These are namely radial load which is in the radial direction of the shaft and the axial load in axial direction that is the axis of the shaft. So classification there are two types of basic category of bearing one is a sliding another one is rolling contact. So based on the friction nature we have this classification sliding contacts as the friction nature is a sliding. So you can see in this diagram the bearing is of sliding nature that means the bush and the oil hole. Through this oil hole we pour a liquid film or liquid which provides a bearing action. Sliding friction is comparatively more than a rolling action. So hence this bearing are also called as frictional bearing. So sliding friction is more than rolling action. So they are also called as frictional bearing or plane bearing. This type of means sliding contact bearings. Sliding takes place between the moving elements and the fixed element. So we call this as a plane bearing also. So namely bush bearing, journal bearing and the guide bearings are example. You can see this diagram. Here this is the bush and this shaft. So on this shaft this cylindrical element is fixed as a bearing action and we pour the oil through this hole. So the liquid film form here which provides a bearing action. Second is rolling contact as friction is comparatively low than sliding contact they are also called as anti-friction bearings. So here you can see a one simple diagram of a rolling contact bearing. So we'll be discussing in detail classifications of rolling contact. In this type of rolling contact bearing, rolling action takes place between this kind of rolling element and the cage. This is inner race and this is outer race. And these are the rolling element. In this case it is a spherical ball. So we can say it's a ball bearing. And they are providing with this part called as a cage or a separator. So we'll discuss this basic in detail for next slide. Now we'll discuss now a roller contact bearing. So in this rolling contact bearing, first one is a single row deep groove ball bearing. So as you can see here, a uh, ball bearing with the groove provided on the here. So that's a single row because we have a single row of ball. Deep groove because there is a groove provided on this inner race through which the balls are moving. And the elements are spherical balls so hence the name single row deep groove ball bearing. You can see these are the spherical balls, inner race and outer race. Most of the times inner race are rotating while outer races are stationary. These balls are fixed or they are binded with element this element called as a cage 
or separator which separate or which provides constrained motion to the rolling element here also you can observe this is this element is a separator which separates every rolling element from each other so this is a cage or a separator or it is also called as a retainer because it retains the position of rolling elements now ball bearings are used to take a they are mostly suitable for radial and axial load in either directions but most of the times radial loads taken by this bearing so most common ball bearings in low speed and light duty application where radial loads are prime concern second one is rolling contact roller type of bearing so we are talking about only rolling contact in this ball bearing is the first part second is a rolling contact roller bearing now in ball bearing the nature of contact is point contact means you can see there is a single point which is in contact with this race so the, we can say the load carrying capacity it's quite low for a ball bearing because it's a point contact for ball bearing whereas for roller bearing the contact nature is a line you can see here these are the line contact between the race and the rolling element so compare with this ball bearing in roller bearing as it is a line contact load carrying capacity is high for roller bearing as well as that's why they are suitable for heavy and sudden loading and high speed application so we always prefer roller bearing over a ball bearing for high duty or it is sudden loading heavy duty applications for high speed purpose thing is only they are not suitable for axial loading means maximum they can take radial loads so this was the point of discussion for the basic types of bearings now we'll be discussing in detail next rolling contact ball bearing some point which we already discussed so what are the main features for rolling contact bearing let's say talking about specific ball bearing contact surface has a rolling contact in rolling contact bearing if it is a ball bearing it is a point contact if it is a roller bearing then it is having a line contact compare with the sliding contact bearing rolling contact bearing offers a low friction hence the name anti friction bearing next the rolling contact bearing they are having either ball bearing or roller bearings they are having a line contact or a point contact they needs they have a local stress generation at the point of contact they are subjected to high stresses so material of that particular rolling element either spherical ball or a cylinder needs to be very strong for this we normally take a material as chromium contained steel that is the balls are generally made up of high carbon chromium steel which provides chromium steel which provides high corrosion resistance and the high strength to the material so here you can observe this is a simple ball bearing diagram i have shown in this which is we have already discussed in previous slide another rolling contact bearing we may have the rolling element here as a taper so that is the roller is is not a straight cylinder it's a taper roller bearing so we can say that roller and contact bearing it may be a ball bearing or it may be a anything as a rolling element so in this case they have shown with the simple diagram as taper roller bearing these two normally the taper roller bearings are used in the pairs so you can see on the one end of the shaft they used two pairs of bearing and they attached back to back means this side and this side so this is one arrangement of the bearing which is most common for automobile shafts now next we'll discuss in detail the types of bearing first you can see the diagram a spherical roller bearing so element which is used as a rolling which is in spherical shape hence the name spherical roller bearing now second one is a self aligning bearing as you can see the animation in self aligning bearings are used 
with the small change as you can observe the position of the inner rays and outer rays. The inner rays of the self-aligning bearing has a grooves whereas outer rays for self-aligning bearing having common spherical surface which provides alignment to the bearing. Normally these bearings, self-aligning bearings have the two rows of balls if it is a ball bearing in a self-aligning type and normally the two deep uninterrupted restways grooves are provided on the inner which is common to the ball bearing. So just like a simple deep groove ball bearing inner race is same but whereas outer race is not having the groove whereas outer race is a common spherical surface. These bearings are used when there is a misalignment between the shaft or shaft can have or shaft may have a deflection which can be tolerated by this type of bearing. This deflection or the flex of the shaft occurs due to the errors in the assembly or errors during the manufacturing of the shaft or mounting of the bearing. So the small misalignment can be taken care by this type of bearing. Hence the name given self-aligning bearings. You need to identify from this image, from this diagram which type of bearing it is. So from the race structure as outer race is a common spherical path you can observe this as self-aligning bearing. Next is needle bearing. It's a very simple. Needle bearings are having a comparatively large length and a smaller diameter otherwise it looks like a same cylindrical bearing. So needle structure it is used when there is a constraint of the space in the radial direction. So we can use the needle bearings in particular applications in IC engine parts. Whereas you can see the next diagram this taper roller bearing you can observe this shape is in taper means a roller element is having a taper so that's a taper roller bearing in needle structure as we know this length is comparatively large but it looks like a needle so hence the name is a needle bearing and in self aligning this is a common spherical path whereas inner rest is having the grooves that's the difference now Cylindrical roller is very simple. The rolling element is a complete a small cylinder straight cylinder hence the name cylindrical roller. All this bearing as per their shape takes uh, moderate or high axial and radial loads. The next last type of bearing as I have shown in this diagram is angular contact bearings. So here you can see the structure changes with the inner and outer rest for this type of bearing also. So if you observe normal simple deep groove ball bearing which is having a common groove on inner and outer rest whereas in case of angular contact bearing inner and outer rest ways they are displaced relative to each other in the direction of bearing axis. That means these bearings are designed to accommodate combined load. So when we have simultaneous radial and axial load we can use or we use this type of bearing called as angular contact bearing. So this last one is angular contact bearing. You can observe the shape of this raceways which is slight change with the deep groove ball bearing. The axial load carrying capacity of angular contact bearings increases as the contact angle increases. So if I increase this alpha as shown in the diagram accordingly the for this bearing, ball bearing, angular contact bearing, load carrying capacity increases with the increasing the angle. So now with this discussion, we will discuss the next part. Which type of bearing takes which kind of load, which is a very logical by the nature of rolling element. So as we discuss axial and the radial loads, most of the times as per the applications many times the loads are purely axial sometimes loads are purely radial and uh, ideal case if we have a combined load we go with the spherical roller bearing or maybe angular contact bearing depends on the application. So here the first diagram indicates simply uh, it's a 
axial or the thrust load in the direction that is axis of the shaft and the radial load so normally the ball bearings are subjected or they they can absorb both mostly a radial loads but they can take a slightly axial load also ball bearings are used when the applications it is a light duty application means low power transmitting capacity or maybe in a low axial and a low radial load format next ball bearings with the light axial load here you can see it takes light axial that means thrust load whereas comparatively moderate load radial direction second self aligning in this case in self aligning bearing as we discussed it aligns or it means alignment can be tolerated by this type of bearing so mostly it takes a radial load and very light axial load it can take same with the angular contact bearing you can just observe from this diagram also there is a small change between the structure of the inner and outer rest for ball bearing and angular contact bearing which is having a common angle that is alpha as we discussed so for angular contact bearing it is the best way to take a combined load that is a high axial load and moderate radial load so we can always prefer this one when there is a combined load last one is a thrust bearing thrust means purely axial load acts on the particular shaft so when high axial or the thrust load acts we prefer this bearing called as a thrust bearing so the element if in this case it is a ball so we can call as a thrust ball bearing next one is anti friction again rolling elements in this case it is cylindrical roller bearing so you can observe here the element is a straight cylinder cylindrical bar here you can see it's a straight cylinder so its capacity to take a high radial load so we prefer this bearing when the ra radial loads are large but most again small modification in this we may have this spherical roller bearing where you can observe here the shape of rolling element is a spherical cylinder it's not a straight cylinder like this here you can observe the shape is a spherical so we call this as a spherical roller bearing next one again most common in the automobile industry is taper roller bearing the rolling element which is used as a taper cylindrical format that is a taper roller so which capacity is most ideal case that is it can take high axial load as well as high radial load so that's why we use this type of bearing in pairs in most of the automobiles taper roller bearing yes you can see this diagram and actual elements last one is needle roller so you can say actual image for it and these are the like needle elements needle kind of rolling elements with the separator and the cage provided here now intentionally i put this slide at the last thrust bearing so when specifically the load is a pure axial that are pure thrust so you can see this image a day to day life example the chair is having a complete purely the thrust load so in this case the bearing used are thrust so you can see this is a vertical shaft and the bearing is mounted here so in this case we may have this kind of bearing that is a thrust ball bearing because for this chair we need to have a very low capacity load carrying capacity so we go with this thrust ball bearing similarly we may have a thrust bearing which can be taper roller thrust bearing or cylindrical rolling element and it can be used as a thrust bearing so yes this is the last slide to just go through with all the types of bearing with the real images so deep groove ball bearing you can just see this first image deep groove ball bearing with the inner rest most of the times rotating while outer is stationary so you can observe this is part is like a separator or the cage retainer part 
next to the self aligning bearing as we discussed cylindrical roller bearing so here you can observe these are cylindrical rollers 